Let's go. All right. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Hey, man, it's been a hectic week, but uh, we're here and uh, we're alive. So hello, comrades and uh, friends. Welcome to this week at the uh, Communist Party. So a lot has gone on this week. Uh, how many uh, people have entered the Democratic uh, primary. Uh, uh, who who can even count anymore? So we've got Warren, mm -hmm. uh, Kobushar, yes. Sanders, Harris, uh, Booker officially or no? I can't remember. And then you got that young man from uh, I think South Bend, the mayor, um, and uh, he's uh, he's running. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Beto has not uh, declared yet, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Biden also hasn't uh, declared. Yeah. But Sanders, man, the, 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 the dude raised, what was it, $6 million or something? In like a day. That? In a day. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not, you know, two donors cutting him $3 million checks. Individual um, contributions, yeah. right? uh, the working. I was reading a poll this morning and uh, actually it was a Gallup poll that was announced uh, the morning of his announcement before he announced uh, <clears throat> and it described how the uh, Republican party has kind of consolidated as a party of the uh, Euro-American Christian right Mm -hmm. And the Democratic Party is everybody else. And mm -hmm. but the most important thing is that the number of people who who self-define as liberal and conservative has gone way up. Uh, mm -hmm. those who see themselves as moderates and conservatives have gone down a, a little bit. And therefore they were arguing that uh, Mr. Sanders doesn't have a clear path to the nomination, but uh, it's not impossible. Well, and I saw some articles suggesting like the, I think the New York Times headline was, Bernie enters the race um, no longer as an underdog. Um, uh, another news outlet, I can't remember which one um, said, um, Bernie's entering as a front runner. Uh, right. So what are we what are we to make of all this? What this? Yeah, a number of fine women candidates, you know, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren and the uh, yeah. Kamala Harris, and as you pointed out, the senator from New York and the, the one from uh, where was yeah. Minnesota that she's yeah. running. And I believe. Yeah. So. What do I make of it? You know, I am like really excited that number one, you know, there's a new framework for this election, and. Um, beginning with November of last year, where a number of socialists uh, and progressive uh, left candidates won. And the um, socialist idea, despite what Mr. Trump wants to say and do, is alive and well in Iowa. You know, more people thought socialism was a good thing uh, as opposed to a, a capitalism. And to me, that's a great thing. And um, you know, a lot of people get a little oh, bent up and sh out of shape around, do people really understand what socialism is? And, um, you know, because a lot of people see it as, you know, uh, healthcare, public option, that's socialism, or the post office, that's socialism, or, um, you know, um, the, the VA, that's socialism, you know, and it's true that all of those things are, you know, uh, socialistic in nature. They're public, um, but we think um, that socialism is working class power, and and it is. Um, but to me, I don't get too hung up in the because the nuances, though they are important, you know. Um, the fact that people are talking about it is important and that allows us to have a conversation about deepening the concept, you know? Well, and, and so socialism, it, it isn't, 
it isn't a checklist where you have to go down through and like the form that socialism takes here is going to depend on the movement that builds socialism here. It's going to arise, you know, uh, as a, a framework for, for answering the questions, resolving the difficulties that can't be resolved under capitalism. And those, you know, it'll be based on, on the, the, the coalition of forces, the, um, you know, unity and organization of the working class. So we can't, so trying to say like, you know, it's going to be like this, it's not going to be like that. Um, what we can say is utopian, huh? Is that what you're trying to say? It's, it's right. not. It's not going to be. It's not. Yeah. It's not a. It's not utopian, though. We're certainly hoping. You know, um, we just published a mailbag actually arguing that, you know, maybe we do need to think in in utopian terms in a certain sense, like defending this idea that we have to look for something better. So I don't want to. Like totally the news, hold, hold fast to dreams, for dreams die. Life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. So you have to hold fast to the notion, to the concept of it. But at the same time, we have to base it in uh, the real situations that are unfolding uh, in the course of the class and democratic struggle. But there's also history and culture and, and, and traditions that are important as, uh, as a well. But yeah. before we do all of that, you gotta, you gotta defeat these um, Republican, neo-fascist, alt-right. Uh, and, 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 th and that's the thing. And so backers. People think that, how to say, um, like people are figuring out what socialism means right now. Mm. They're, they're, we're collectively developing a definition for it. And, you know, I think we go astray, talking about candidates again, I think we go astray when we try to focus on you know, who's the candidate that most represents socialism? Like who's, you know, who's gonna lead us to- really? You think that? Um, yeah, I, I kinda, you know, I think we're, we talk too much about candidates right now. Hmm. Um, the so the state- should be on issues, is that what you're saying? Well, on issues and, you know, we're not, we're not looking for, we're not electing, you know, a Lenin of American socialism. We're looking for, like the, the stakes of this election are the same as the stakes of the one in November and the one before that. Right. Um, we have this neo-Confederate fascist party right. uh, that holds an inordinate amount of power here. Um, and the question is, how decisively can it be defeated? Is it gonna be, are we gonna take a few seats back, shift the balance of power a little bit? Are we actually going to smash that apparatus, decisively defeated, as Lenin says, eliminate this, this neo-Confederate force, Trumpism, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, extreme right wing from American politics. And that's what- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. You're going a little bit too fast. How are you going to decisively defeat the Republican party when they control the Supreme Court, they control the uh, Senate, they control the majority of state houses and governorships, um, and they control the majority of the pocketbook, bank accounts, um, capital. Well, so, they, I mean, to talk about a decisive defeat means what to you? I mean, uh, well, yeah. I mean, the, the way I've always measured a decisive defeat um, isn't based on the composition of this or that legislative body. It's on what issues are on the table and what issues are off the table. But legislative bodies are the bodies that wield political power. I mean- Right, for sure. But the, for me, the, 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 the notion of a decisive defeat is, um, right? So when it's no longer politically feasible to float the idea of um, voter suppression, um, when it's no longer politic, when it's no longer possible to propose that women should not have um, autonomy over their own bodies. The voter suppression has been a standard bearer of the right wing in this country since the time of reconstruction. For sure. I mean, poll taxes, you know, literacy uh, clauses, all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, then the, they couldn't do it, then the Klan wrote again and and, um, you know, 
So this is not a this is not a new problem that we're that we're dealing with. Um, now it's it's voter ID. So when will it be? In, you know, not a viable. They're always going to try to suppress the vote. Well, um, let's say they they will have been decisively defeated when that bullshit isn't happening anymore. Like that's one of the ways we'll know that. Um, uh, but so so part of that movement right now, concretely, is is um, you know, the idea of one person, one vote, the, the, the defense of voting rights is a core democratic value, the expansion of the franchise. That's because um, they're, they're really trying to restrict it. So, well, we need you know, I, I think that, you know, in, in that regard, what, what, what you're talking about is more than one person, one vote, but the development of a new political and, and electoral framework where you um, have a radical reform of the electoral process of, as a whole, where the electoral college is no longer there, where you have um, proportional uh, representation and, and other forms of uh, electing uh, uh, people to office. Uh, and so you can talk about what the Portuguese call advanced democracy, you know? Yeah. Uh, which would uh, kind of- which puts us very close to, it's, you know, it butts up against where we would start thinking about working class power and about social. Right, right, right. right. Well, we got a long way to uh, go. Though I do want to come back and say that I think it's a wonderful thing that people who call themselves are socialists are running and winning. And uh, we should be part of that. We need well, to be communist candidates and we, we welcome that. We, we welcome it and we uh, support it. But we have to uh, organize given that, uh, that development on the basis of the issues that are gonna unite the you know, largest number of people uh, against the right that that yeah. I agree with uh, whole, wholeheartedly they're trying to they're, like there's this um you know capitalism tries to turn everything into a source of division and what should be a primary process that's about you know, as you say pushing the most progressive issues the building the, the the broadest and most powerful unity and figuring out how we can do that gets turned into this um sort of sniping um like before even th like before people even declare they have to be you know shot out of the race whether it's um bernie or kamala harris or um any number of other people who, who've been attacked you know long before they even declared their uh, so right 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 so anyway uh we'll see how it uh, uh goes uh some other things happened this week uh the Venezuela crisis has sharpened. And in fact, we, we held a national uh, uh, meeting uh, online last night uh, and uh, where we discussed uh, working to prevent uh, the Trump administration from intervening. And uh, we talked about the importance of talking to friends and uh, neighbors and coworkers uh, about what's going on. And, and encourage people to, you know, get out, get, get out their uh, computers and uh, cell phones and pen and paper and write to letters to the editor, write to their congressman, uh, uh, call and, them, organize and, delegations. You and know. one of the ways I've been sort of explaining this Venezuela thing to people is like, it, it's not this process that uh, of economic sabotage and intervention uh, is not just something that happens in other countries. This is like, look at what's happened to the public school system here. It was defunded, it was economically sabotaged. And then when it showed the stress from that, um, there was an ideological campaign to call like the failure of public schools and how we need to, you know, spend more money on charters and vouchers and destroy this great democratic right. experiment. Um, I think there are a lot of parallels. Um, and so they're doing the same kind of thing in Venezuela. They're starving the country to death, and then they kick it to the side and say it, it don't work. And see, this attempt to to like empower the people has right. has failed. Right. So yeah. So so uh, there are going to be demonstrations tomorrow. 
uh, all over the country. So we encourage uh, uh, people to uh, participate in it. That's, that's gonna be important, but the struggle is going to be ongoing. Uh, and so uh, we gotta keep the pressure on and we're just at the very beginning of uh, uh, this movement. And it really means rebuilding the uh, peace movement because if you look at it, you know, people aren't convinced about the issue of non-intervention yet. Though I think once the American people get the information, a peace majority will develop. So, I, and, and there are certainly mass demonstrations against the Iraq war in, um, you know, in, in George W. Bush's first and, and second term as well. Right. Um, people will mobilize around this. Yes. Well, we just got a couple of minutes left. You're watching this week at cpusa.org. And uh, convention uh, time, we are uh, working on the uh, organizing the convention. We encourage everybody to, you know, get out your wallet and your uh, credit, a debit card, go to the website and pay your $10 assessment fee uh, if you're able to because uh, we need to get a membership count because we got to elect delegates. And in order to elect delegates, we got to know how many members we have because you know you'll have like 10 members, uh, one delegate, 20 mm -hmm. members, two delegates, that kind of thing. So we got to get an accurate count. If you don't have the money, that's okay. Just write us uh, and let us uh, know. Just say, count me in. I want to be in for the count. And uh, that's important as well. What about the convention discussion? How is yeah. that? We need your money. We also need your ideas. Mm. Um, so we, we talked before building socialism, defining socialism, figuring out how to get there is a collective process. Um, we encourage you, please take a look at the new draft program. It's available for download um, in the convention materials on our party website. Um, send us your thoughts, your comments. You can make a video, you can write an article, you can comment on articles when they get published. Um, we just, we remind you that, you know, discussion, we, we mean this to be comradely and we really wanna keep it accessible and inclusive. So um, uh, just keep that in mind. We're trying to have as many voices as possible. Um, keep your language accessible, keep your, your tone Comradely, and, and let us know what you think. We want to. And where can they comment? Where I mean, if they want to write, uh, where should they go to? Uh, you should comment. You can send uh, an article or a link to a video to discussion at cpusa.org. That's discussion at cpusa.org. Um, also, in the convention materials on the party website, you'll find an article called "Welcome to Pre-Convention Discussion." that has links and instructions on, um, on how to do that. Okay, and I believe that they'll be able, um, we'll, we will all be able to uh, read articles uh, here on Facebook, on the party's uh, Facebook page and comment on them, isn't that yep. the case? Yep. If, people, if people send in articles, we will, uh, we will publish them and, uh, and open the discussion. But they'll also be able to comment on articles on the Facebook page. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so, we so there are multiple forums for discussion. Very good. Well, I think that uh, that does it for this week. Um, next week, uh, we will be back at uh, 1030 Eastern. So please uh, join us uh, and um, have a great week. And we will see you uh, tomorrow uh, on the picket line. Uh, at the rallies uh, demanding that Trump and uh, company, and that includes those Democrats that are supporting an intervention against the elected government of Venezuela, were saying, hell no, we're not gonna go. Hands off. Hands off, uh, hands off Venezuela. And we got memes on here on our Please share them, you know, get the word out. You know, we got articles, we got petitions. Let folks know we have to build a movement. And to, to say that it is not the place of Donald Trump and his cronies and the US ruling class 
to decide the direction of development for the Venezuelan people. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. We, we, we have to build a movement uh, um, against us. Okay, Scott. Talk to you later, Joe. Good to see you. Take care. Bye, everybody.